Hello again, everyone. This is Joe Hinches with Beyond the Chart, and this is technical analysis of the stock market today. Today is Wednesday, June 17th. We're going to take a look at the market action of the last two days, uh, and then we're going to look at our indices like we normally do and our indicators. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, four global indices, Germany, Russia, India, and China, and then we're going to look at five Chinese ADRs today. Uh, SoFun Holdings, I believe is what it's called, SFUN, Chihu 360, VIP Shop, Alibaba, and Dang, D-A-N-G. Okay, and we're going to start off here with the Dow. The Dow was uh, up 31 points today, but as you can see, it's kind of a doji bar in here. You know, you know, we rallied and it was up a little bit after the Federal Reserve came out with their reading or their announcement at one o'clock. And then Janet Yellen had her uh, press conference and then, it, you know, it just came right back on down and uh, almost, uh, you know, closed right where it opened. But it didn't. So, you know, basically this kind of an indecision type day, like the market's really trying to figure it out. I'm still staying with my wave count. I still think I've got one, two, one, two. And we may even have another one, two in here. Uh, so it's kind of working its way down and hasn't done anything different for me to uh, have to invalidate the wave count that I've got right now. Uh, let's take a look at the S&P 500. Uh, similar type scenario, though, uh, what was it, Monday? It didn't go to a lower low here on Monday. It came real close. Bounce back, same kind of price action in here on the S&P 500. Uh, the NASDAQ, uh, definitely a doji bar in here today on the NASDAQ. And now, you know, we've got the 10 below the 21. So the short term's trying to creep down, you know, it broke below 21. So it's kind of sideways, uh, but, you know, it is below. So we'll just have to see. Now, no guarantee. I mean, it was below over here, too, and then it rallied back up. So... We just have to watch this action, but uh, this is not a bullish bar. This is indecisive when you get that type of price action. New York Composite. Uh, and it, it, it was, again, very much like a doji bar in here, like uh, what we just looked at on the NASDAQ. Uh, so, uh, and it's right at the 10 uh, exponential moving average. We got the 21 below the 55 here. Uh, so we've had, yes, we've had a two-day uh, bounce over since Monday, uh, but uh, we'll have to watch and see whether or not we get any continuation, you know, the fact that we're down below this uh, this wedge. And the last one is the Russell 2000. A little more of a, I don't know if I could really call it a reversal bar, but it definitely is in the lower half of the trading range today where it closed. And it, you know, it opened near the high and then sold off. If you look at the price action of that bar in here. Uh, so anyway, a little bit unclear. You know, it looked like it was wanting to run. We're getting a series of a uh, little bit new, newer highs in here. Let's take a look at the indicators on this real quick. Eh, not really confirming the push on the RSI. And it's hard to tell. Uh, not really confirming it here on the uh, DI minus. Actually, I should be looking at the blue line. And the blue line did push a little bit higher. Okay, so here's what I'm looking at. The blue line's the DI plus. Okay, so that relates to the buying strength in here. And it did push a little higher uh, over the last two peaks. Uh, so we'll just have to continue to watch and see what we get here out of the Russell 2000. Again, I talked about this on Monday, how it did, you know, it is staying above the 10 and it's trending, trying to trend higher. Now, what it's running into is this previous high here and here where uh, let me just draw a horizontal line across the top right there that's what I think it's running into and uh, you know into this area and that could be why it just reversed off of this uh, high point today all right let's take a look at the short-term trading index and uh, it has dropped back down to uh, 10 day 1.09 so we're right smack in the middle again the VIX this was interesting, and I tweeted this and, and, and mentioned and, and talked about it on Stock Twits today that I thought this was going to about to break. It was rallying. It was all the way up here. It was solid green, and uh, you know. And then when the uh, the uh, Federal Reserve stuff came out, then it, uh, it sold off. Uh, so when this thing breaks, 
it just looks like a four, you know, one, what is this? One, two, three to three and a half month little base that it's putting in here. And actually you can almost count all the way over here. I mean, because if you take this trend line, so it's a three to four month base that it looks like it's putting in. If it breaks above that, I think it's going to go. I think it's going to spike. The real question is, you know, how far will it go? Let me zoom back out of this. And, you know, it happens periodically. I mean, here was a bigger base and we got a huge spike out of it. Um, and you can go back and take a look. Now, here was a here was a base, almost like a little head and shoulders. And we didn't get a huge move out of it there. Uh, so you just you just never know, but it just looks like has that feel. It's been trying, you know. It tried here on uh, the fifteenth, which was Monday. You know, again tried to. So the last three days this week, it's it's taken a shot, and it just hasn't been able to break through this because I've had this trend line drawn in here. So we continue to monitor that, and let's see. The next thing is the high low. That we're going to take a look at and again we continue to have this downward trending action in the high low we're back we had 13 more new highs than new lows today so not a whole lot of anything to talk about you know we're back up in the neutral zone from uh, being down here uh, but that's the picture on the 52 week new high new lows and I think that's it for the indicators for today. And then let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at our, um, well, I, I wanted to look at the uh, uh, international stocks. Here we go. Yeah, the DAX. Let's take a look at the DAX. Okay, so the DAX has been trending down. So, uh, you know, topped out on April 10th. We've been trending down. We got the short term and the intermediate term down. And so when you look at this, you say, well, okay, last Wednesday was this day here, the 10th. Since last Wednesday, it was up on Thursday, and then it basically has, you know, sold off. We're down over the last week here on the DAX. And the DAX was down 66 points today. Uh, the Russia RTS, I think it's RTS-1. I could never really tell, is it RTS-1, RTSI? Um, but I'm going with RTS-1, so... That's the way we've got it labeled. Now, this thing has bounced back up a little bit, just a little counter trend. That's what it looks like to me after breaking this trend line. And I'm not sure what else to read into this. We could, you know, here's a previous low in here. It could be getting resistance as it tries to bounce off of that. Um, the 233 day is sloping down. The 55 has come back up to that. 21 is below the 55. So the short term and intermediate, all three trends are to the downside, although the 55 had been rising in here because of this move move here. So we'll see whether this is, this looks like just a little counter trend type move, and I would expect uh, the uh, Russia to uh, roll over. That would be what I'd be looking for. The next one to take a look at is India. India continues to correct, although we've had a little bit of a bounce. Is this last, yeah, okay. We're slightly lower over the last week, last five trading days here. Big sell off on Thursday, and then we basically kind of crawled its, uh, you know, clawed its way back up here. Doji bar today, uh, but again, uh, the short term and intermediate trends are down. You know, pretty solid that you could see that we're in this downtrend pullback. And then the last one we'll take a look at tonight is the um, Shanghai Composite. And the Shanghai Composite, I think, has done, I think this fifth wave in here is complete. I think we had one, two, three, four, five. If that is the case, and we've got the third intermediate, then we're going to be in for corrective action. Now, there's something like 13 different ways, you know, corrective ways that, uh, that, that it can take, uh, you know, shape or form of. So you never really know what the heck it's going to do. Usually what I'm looking for is the fact that, you know, well, what did wave two do? And wave two was kind of a flat and shallow. So I'm expecting wave four to be more of a zigzag sharp and maybe a little deeper. Uh, I'm thinking maybe to the bottom of the previous wave four. Uh, but in, you know, so we'll see. We'll see what we get. We'll see if we start to correct off in here. You know, everybody's talking about the extreme, uh, you know, you know, China's going to crash, you know, you know, yada, yada. 
But when I look at this, <clears throat> I think, uh, you know, we've got one, two, three, four. We're working a four. We're going to have we're going to have a fifth wave still to come. So I don't think we're at the top here on this five wave sequence on the Shanghai composite. All right, let's see. And that's it for the international indices. Let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at SoFun. SoFun Holding. I'm not pro probably pronouncing that correctly. Boy, this has been uh, trading really, really well. Now, this is less than $10 a share, but this was the most active of the like 40 Chinese stocks or 30 to 40 Chinese stocks I've got on a list. This was the most actively traded stock today. And uh, it's 28.8 million shares. Um, and I say most active of the Chinese stocks again. That's what I'm talking about. So here's what it looks like to me. When I back out of this, this looks to me like SoFun has had a primary wave up. We had one, two, three, four, and a big extended wave five. Because wave five it was extended on this deep correction that occurred, came all the way back down to the wave two area of that fifth wave. And, uh, and you know, it was deep. And so now I think primary wave two is over. And the other thing that kind of helps me, you know, see that or think that is that when I draw this trend line across the top of this corrective action, uh, it was broken in here. Now, you know, it kind of was broken in here in April, early April pulls back, and then it was substantially broken here at the, at, towards the end of April. So this looks like a first minor wave, second wave pullback, and we're working a third wave up. So, you know, this is acting nice and strong like a third wave too. I mean, in the uh, let's take a look at the volume. Uh, the volume is all above 50-day moving average on the volume down here. Yeah, that was kind of weird. Why did it do that? Oh, it's because of that. Let me let me blow the volume up a little bit. So you can see this. The dotted line is 50-day moving average of volume. So I like to see when the when the you know when the volume is above that, it tells me it's you know super strong coming in, uh, either buying or selling power depending on what the situation is. But here clearly the buying power is coming in. So this uh, this looks like a this could be a fourth, like it's doing a fourth. The fact that we had a sharp pullback here again, this may do something like an A, B, C. Uh, so we'll have to watch this one. But I definitely think we're working a third minor wave up. And let's look for potential. Mm, yeah, I mean, you could run into some resistance right in here, you know, because of this, uh, this price action clustered in here. So it wouldn't be surprising in, in between 11, 10 and 11 you know, to see some resistance come in. All right, the next one we'll take a look at is Chihu 360. If I can find it, there it is. All right, we've been looking at this on a regular basis, and I know I talked to you about the fact that this looked like a big head, shoulders, you know, head and shoulders, shoulder, head, shoulder. Uh, looks like it broke out, pulled back a little bit. Um, really, I probably should have gotten in here on this close, didn't. Uh, so I'm still watching this thing. Big, big move today. It was up 4.1. Uh, and it was, you know, a lot higher than that at one point. Another $2.50 higher than that at its high. So here's the thing that I see, again, just like on SoFun that we just looked at. Uh, here's the trend line that's containing the corrective action, in my opinion. Now this is, you know, you've, it's, you know, you could also draw another one. I mean, you could draw one over here, uh, down in here. And of course, that one was broken first. But this one encompasses this corrective action here. So I wouldn't be surprised to see it run into a little resistance here. And then we get the previous peak right in here around 75.2. Let me blow that up a little bit. So yeah, you know, you'd be right in here, not too far above this. I wouldn't be surprised to see it run into a little bit of resistance in here. Um, would love to see it pull back a little more and then set up to go again. Uh, but I would want to see this actually broken, you know, this trend line broken to kind of confirm that, yeah, we truly are in a, you know, this almost looks like, let me go ahead and label it as a one, uh, two, 
and then we did, we would be working a three of some kind. And when I look at Fibonacci projection of that, if I look at wave one ran back here, a normal wave three would at a minimum take it up here to 85. Uh, so that would be interesting. And then, of course, you've got the head and shoulders projection to factor into also. So there's definitely looking like there's some room to the upside. We want to see this trend line broken. Uh, and we'll continue to watch uh, Chihu 360. Vip Shop is the next one. Vip Shop is, okay, so we've got a little counter trend action going on here with Vip Shop. This may be all that we're going to get in terms of the effort to close this gap. It didn't quite close it. You know, here's the top of the gap right in here. It got really, really close. So uh, that may be it. I don't know. It's it's hard to hard to see. Let's look at the, you know, we're getting some divergence. We never really got oversold on the RSI. Uh, we're getting some divergence in here on the demand index. And not so much on the uh, DI minus um, on the directional movement. Uh, so we'll have to watch and see. I and mean, this is a little counter trendish. Um, we'll see whether it has legs. Look at the volume again. Mm, only one day today above the 50 days. So this little move in here of uh, these days in here don't have super solid volume coming into it. So that makes it a little suspect to me. So I have to continue to watch that. And then Alibaba. This is one I've got a trade idea on, and uh, we're in with puts on this. Um, actually, we flipped out. We got stopped out on calls. I've talked about this, and we're in on puts. You know, the short-term trend is to the downside. The fact that this pulled back uh, a lot further than I ever thought it was going to, uh, overlapped this action in here, makes this look like an ABC corrective action to me, like a three-wave, okay? Because, uh, you know, this can't be wave one, two, three, four, because four cannot overlap one. So this kind of makes me lean into the fact that it's a corrective uh, wave going on. Therefore, this must still be part of the downtrend. And we've got this gap down here that I'm looking at and thinking, OK, that gets closed if we get down around 80.86 uh, at the top of this bar right here on uh, May 6th. So that's what I'm watching. We'll see if we continue to get the price action to the downside and keep it working in that direction. The last one we're going to take a look at tonight is Dang. E-commerce China Dang. What a name. And uh, so here's, uh, here's what e-commerce China Dang. I have not looked at this in a long, long time because it's, you know, the uh, price range is way down below 20. But it's interesting because I had looked at this from an Elliott Wave perspective a, a while back. And every, in, uh, all of the uh, labeling to the left of here, to the left, not counting this one, two, three, whatever, all of that was on my chart when I opened it up. So clearly, I had seen a primary wave one up and that we were correcting an A, B, and working a C down. So this looks like a C complete to me, like five waves down. So therefore, I'm labeling this as a primary wave two corrective action that's complete. And when you look at that, um, down here, the low of the start of that first wave one, 3.68. You know, we went all the way up here to 19 plus. Now we corrected back down to seven and a half. And now it looks like we're trying to run again. But just like Chihu 360 and SoFun, I want to see these uh, trend lines that contain the corrective action. I want to see them broken. Okay, so I'd like to see that. And I think we're going to run into a little resistance here. Uh, and I do think we've got a, a minor wave one here uh, up and then an ABC uh, flat correction, expanded flat. Uh, corrective wave two in that we're working wave three and it sure is acting like a wave three and then look at this volume it's huge huge way above 50-day moving average of volume now it, it was coming in on the selling but even stronger coming in on the buying in here now I haven't looked at the news on this stock I uh, have no idea if there's you know what's going on with it I'm looking purely at the stock price and the price action uh, for it to tell me the story uh, so right now, 
what I'm looking at is I'm expecting this to move up here at least to 12 and a half. It's going to run into this trend line and it's going to, that will help close this little gap that's right here. Uh, right at, what is the low there? The low is 12.19, so say 12.18. So when it gets into that range, I think it may run into the resistance. If it's stronger than that and it blows through this, this trend line, then, you know, great. You know, it's just confirming what's going on. But I do think we're, we're working a, um, a minor wave three up of a, uh, you know, first intermediate wave in a third primary wave. So right now it looks like uh, Dang is getting ready to go and I'd like to see it break that trend line. Okay, that's, that's it for tonight, uh, and we'll be back. Let's see, I'll probably try to put out, look for videos on the stock uh, technical analysis uh, chart page uh, uh, on my website. Uh, I'll probably be putting out uh, something on individual stocks uh, each day, and so look for uh, something like that, two to three minute short video. And uh, then I'll be back on Saturday with the weekend update. So uh, if you're watching this video anywhere besides my website, head on over there, check out the posts. And if you're not a subscriber, subscribe. It gives you access to the Trade Ideas webpage and uh, the free PDF I've got for you, the five essentials. So until next time, stay focused, follow your plan, and trade without fear. Have a great Thursday, Friday, everyone.